Hideaway Hills Golf Club. Um, Hideaway Hills Golf Club, absolutely stunning. Look at this. It's like a 200 foot drop in elevation. But um, we're gonna swing our swings and then uh, we get back to it, so. Start this thing off right. Cheers. Cheers, man. What's up? Thanks for having me, man. Always. Uh, so we are, where are we exactly? I know we're Poconos, but where are we? Um, I mean, Gilbert, but nobody knows where Gilbert is. We're like right outside Strasburg. Okay, so East Strasburg area. Um, yeah. We're at Burke's house, beautiful game room. We've got a pool table, a kegerator, Mortal Kombat. Putting green. Uh, putting green, like literally everything you think of. So um, we're gonna get in one tonight after watching the birds and, or sorry. Sorry, it's getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. Yeah, I know. We're talking about fantasy already. Um, watch the Phillies at the local water and hole. The fight T Timbers. So uh, hopefully we chop down some Astros. But uh, how do, before we get into the football aspect of it, how are you feeling going into Game One of the World Series? I think we're taking Game One and we're gonna lose Game Two. Okay. And then I'm hoping for a home sweep. But I'm in a block pool and I just got my numbers today. Astros four, Phillies zero. So, so I'm really four. torn. No, for the block pool, I need Astros oh, like four, literal, Phillies is zero. Oh, I think well, I guess 10 works. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. That's the only four. thing I can hope yeah, for because I don't want to see four nothing play. It'd be <laughs> fucking sick. Dude, uh, so, and who do we got here? That's Cookie. Cookie? Little Cookie. She's sweet. How old is she? I have no idea. Like six, seven. Gotcha. Uh, she's old, but she's tiny. Uh, oh, You're wow. supposed to sit on my lap. I'm the villain. Gotcha. I had a joke, but it was crude. Um... <laughs> But yeah, man. So, okay, cool. Um, so what do you, besides the block, what do you actually have tonight going like score wise? You, you think um, we take the first one? Before? I think it's going to be low scoring because okay. there's two studs on the mound. I think it's Noel versus Verlander. Okay. And Verlander is incredible in the playoffs on top of being one of like the best pitchers ever. ever. So I don't see us doing too much off of him. He's probably going to take us pretty deep, seven innings or so, eight innings. And then I think we can maybe rally after that. If we can steal a hit or a home run off of, uh -huh. of Noel, we'll be... Sorry, right, I didn't mean to cut you off. These are sweet. Yeah. Very cool coasters. My dad's hobby. Welcome to the Bergs. I love how it has a, uh, a, bottle, a bottle opener. opener. Everybody that's needs sweet. a bottle opener. Yeah, it's sweet, man. Um, yeah, I'm stoked, dude. Last time we went to Timbers was a great time. I think I think low scoring as well for tonight. Um, I for think... Sure. I don't know why 4-3, 5-3 sounds. That's what I was thinking. I was yeah. thinking 3-2. Okay. Hopefully Phillies. Gotcha. Yeah, or hopefully I, I have four. a feeling that the Phillies are going to win. Yeah. Today. So I think we, I, I think the Phil's, and this is Philly Faith with a PH. Of course. Uh, Phil's in five. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. So split in yeah. Astros and sweep yeah. at home again. Phil's it would be five. sick to win yeah. in Philly, the World Series in Philly, which is what happened last time. We were yeah. Phillies. So also just a nice little tidbit. Um, I moved out to California and when I yeah, did. Yeah, we didn't all know that. And when I did, uh, the Lakers won. The Dodgers won, and the Rams won. So you're a piece of shit. And now I move back. So you and Jonah. Were and now the first. Phillies are in the World Series. The Eagles are six and zero. So Phillies need to win the World Series to see if I have any real luck like that. Dude. But if they do, even the Flyers are winning right now. I know, like, which is nobody thought they were going to do anything. Yeah. We're at the top of the division. Uh, yeah, just wait. <laughs> just wait. That'll be fun. But uh, that's a right. regular Philly team. Cool. So um, yeah, we'll try to make this pretty short, but. After last week, I mean, everyone is in the hunt, pretty much. Like, I'll call it as it is, Burke, you're not doing house. I'm not doing that. You are, like we just said before this camera turned on, you're frustrated, but you're mainly one loss away from you being in the dire situation. Yeah. So, that puts me explain to me, for, like, from the beginning, man, because, like, I actually did like your team. So, explain to me the beginning, what you were going into the draft, and then as the season has played out, what hasn't happened that you were anticipating to? Yeah, I mean, I didn't love my team on paper because it's not a team I would normally draft. It's like completely backwards from how I draft. I usually go running back heavy first two rounds and then take wide receivers. But I think I was the eighth spot, which I, mean, I couldn't let spot. Jamar Chase fall. And then when it came back to me, Tyree Kill was available. So I had to take both of those guys because compared to the running backs that were left by the time it got to me. I was kind of shit out of luck. So I ended up getting Sanders and Zeke, which I was expecting to be good, but Jalen Hurts is taking all of the rushing touchdowns from Sanders. He's had good yardage, but... Fucking pup. <laughs> um, he's had good yards, but he can't find the end zone, except for that one game in the rain when they couldn't really do anything. 
and Zeke has just been ass. And I think he's sitting this week too, which yeah. fucking sucks because you a pod, but yeah, um, yeah, it does help me out a lot. Yeah, too. it kills. Um, but the rest of my team, I'm, who would have thought that Matthew, Matthew Stafford would be awful this year? The Rams are not yeah. doing anything. Uh, yeah. He was like, a, they were in the Super Bowl last year, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so they won. Yeah, Super Bowl yeah. contenders or Super Bowl winners? I don't no, they won. won. Yeah, that's fucking Yeah. Yeah, so I wasn't yeah. expecting that drop off because they really didn't lose anybody wide receiver wise. If anything, they were supposed to gain with Allen Robinson, and then um, Jamar Chase went through a little rough patch with the Bengals for a little bit. He had like a great first week, and then a couple of weeks after that, well, was that's going to be a separate topic. Yeah, These, I'm I have a sure couple it questions is. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm but, sure it yeah. Is. Um, yeah, man. I mean, again, like on a spot puts you in a tough spot. Like yeah. you, it flips you on your head from what you wanted to do going in because you. Had, I feel like Especially most because people, there's not too many running backs exactly. that anybody was confident in this year. So like, I feel like most people going in, they try to plan for like top four picks or last four picks, and like the yeah. eighth is right on that cusp of that. So like it's it really puts you in a bad spot. Yeah, but stuff. I I'm gonna speak on behalf of the entire league. We're probably all very happy that you're not doing well. Uh, oh, we'll I'll give you flowers where it's due. Like you are a two time champ. Like that's credit. Like. You I still got a chance. It's the same thing. You do. I'm you do. rolling right now, actually. You so to pick up. Except I need to do my job this week. I need yeah. that. And it's not good because Mark, Mark Andrews, Andrews. He was, he was starting, too. too. Bro, I, I, catch bro. I know, man. I know. And the sick thing was I picked up Irv Smith Jr. on the Vikings. Um, 20th tight end. Yeah. Anything outside of the top six tight ends, it's really a huge downfall. Thing, yeah. And I was like, I don't they know what to do. They could have a good game with a touchdown. Exactly. They're just going to do nothing. And then I got, Mark Andrews was questionable up until like 15, 20 minutes before the game. And then I was like, all right, I'm not going to sit Mark Andrews. He got a different injury though too. It was his shoulder. Yeah. Shoulder. Was, he went in with a knee, knee, a hamper and knee injury. And now it's all of a sudden his shoulder. So I'm I'm worried about that. But uh, I will say I am feeling good with how my team is turning around. I have Cooper Cup off of the bye. Got that out of the way. That's good. Keenan Allen going into a bye after being able to play after Mike yeah, Williams, get a little bit, a couple exactly, of like touch it, get some rust off. Mike Williams goes down. That's easily um, noticeable for a benefit for Keenan Allen. Yeah, for sure. Um, Herbert I mean, doesn't look great this he year. He doesn't. His he ribs, doesn't. His ribs I, are killing. Now, him. granted, like I do think his a lot of emphasis. Is exactly, the emphasis like has to be on the O line. Like he's yeah. not getting enough time compared to what he was like used to. Yeah. Now, granted, when you take out that of a Keenan Allen type of wide receiver. Your game plan switches up from Absolutely. like going That's into why the Echo's season. Been so yeah, hot too. exactly. Just the ball. He's a stud. I love that. Yeah, yeah, right. I try to get him every year. Every year, like Logue, sick I, could get him. I missed him by I think one pick. Yeah, well. Logue wasn't sold on him. Like going into, he's like, ah, I just don't like him. Logue, he is so like he like a guy, who, and he reminds me a lot of Cooper Cup in the sense of like he looks like he should be doing your taxes. Yeah, but like he he's they fun. run their routes yeah. that he runs his running plays so well that. They are designed to get you open. When you mix that in with that type of athleticism, yeah. plus with you, when you have two good wide receivers on exactly the side, you, the, not, you the, can't just like key in on somebody on the Chargers. You have to yeah. When you have that much room, you got the play. right play Yeah, call. exactly. So, um, all right, man. I mean, that was a lot of like talking, but like it, going into our teams, we just talked about. I'm kind of interested at this point of the season. Who do you think the top three teams are? And start again. Three, three, two, two one. one. Yeah. So, I thought about it a little bit. I'm looking at the teams today, going through the standings. Mm. Um, I don't think the guys that have the most wins are the best teams. So I would say that number three, I have you. Because you're rolling and you're scoring a lot of points. But I think when you look at your team, it's one of those teams that all has to kind of mesh at the same time. Okay. So I have you at three. Okay. Um, I think you have a big step down without Brees Hall. Yeah. Which is who was that, getting you a yeah, lot of those points yeah. at the beginning of the year. That was my pick of the draft. Yeah. Far and away. I mean, for sure. I told you it was fucking buns when you picked it. And yeah. it ends up. The well, Jets are you, actually. You good. said him and uh, Edward Tillery. Well, I was, just, I just love digging in. I was a little, little right about Edward Tillery, <laughs> yeah. but Free Saw was totally I just love digging in a little. <laughs> um, my number two is Jonah, just based on yeah. sheer points yeah. that he's putting up. Yeah. But Jonah is the unluckiest person I've ever seen in the history of fantasy. Football. So he has 978 points. Eight points scored, and, like nine, and then ten, nine hundred and eleven points yeah. against. So it's yes. wild. Only person with nine hundred points against, and then the next closest is. Uh, oh no! I have. Way oh no! More I'm against. sorry. I have way I'm more against. So me than sorry. <laughs> um, I got fifty fucking points. Wow. Ahead of okay, so never mind. I was totally wrong. It goes you <laughs> at points against Logan, with nine hundred seventy nine, and then Logan, 
And then, but him and Logan yeah. were really close. Yeah. And then everything drops into okay. the 800s. The next Damn, closest guy after wow. the top three is like 80 points ahead, uh, behind me. Yeah. I'm Holy getting, shit. I'm getting I didn't shit. Realize, yeah, I didn't realize it was like that. My team even now, it hasn't been so bad. I put up decent numbers and I'm just losing to... Everybody I play has the week of the year against me. Yeah. It's yeah, Logan bought out on you this year. Or this week, 160 something. I, think I put was, up 155. Yeah. I would have beat yeah. everybody except everyone, Shane yeah. by like a point. Yeah. Shane loved being yeah. able to listen. <laughs> sure. He's like, I love like messing with Bird because he knows it's in good fun, but like he ricochet shot. <laughs> He's like, I got to call him out. And I even, I texted Logan too early in the day. I was typing it out. I was talking shit and I was like, I know if I do this, it's going to backfire. Yeah. And I did it anyway because fuck Logan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There it comes. Uh, well, not actually. Aaron Jones. Love you, Logan. But... Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Two receiving touchdowns late in the game for like, Jones. Literally the last ten He was like shit game. out of luck. <laughs> and he gets fucking like 18 points in two seconds. Yeah. So that was pretty brutal. Um, my top team right now, I think, is Shane. Wow. I think he's just okay. like, top to bottom, has a good team. Yeah. Um, he has two of the best running backs in the league by far. High volume, high yardage. Um, I mean, what can you say about CMC and Parkley? And then now that he started rolling and his team is clicking, which is what he talked about earlier yep. in his episode, I mean, they're just, they're hard to beat. He's putting up a lot of points. It was actually crazy. So, like, Shane and I, like, we obviously watch it after the fact, but after those games played, he called literally everything. Yeah. Like, Stevenson. Like, he was like, oh, well, that was the other thing, too. I think I put down, Ramondre Stevenson is like, I mean, I thought when Damian Harris was coming back last week, that's why I was talking shit to Shane. Yeah. They were going to start splitting the backfield, but Stevenson he looks good. so good. He looks good. And both quarterbacks that the Patriots are testing they right now, love, love him. him. Love Both of them love him, dude. And, so, it's, and he's not being used as, like, a traditional back. He's kind of more so being used like as, like, a like an back. They're throwing him on the exactly, outside. Yeah. Throwing him and inside. And then you just let him work. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's he's a, really good in space. And he's finding a lot of open space. Yeah, Shane's team had a toe, man. And, like, the thing is, that like, people forget. His like, wideouts aren't crazy good, but... But, like, when you have, so... There are plenty when you have... When you have... Three running backs in 15 plus. Barkley, and then you have Stevenson in the place. But then people completely forget that he still has Jamal Williams. He's the 16th back in the league. Yeah. So he There's no way to play him, but... But, no, but, like, at the very least... When you have like, a bye, you've got, got someone. We don't want Like, he, like... That's really where I'm Whenever I have a bye, I'll have yeah. someone to, like, fill in. Especially yeah, that, with... Tomorrow. Well, that's me this week against you, actually. So uh, I have Edward Tiller and Keenan Allen both on a bye, but um, but like I think I like it starts to get easier like after week ten for me. So yeah. like the the championship weeks where it really determines if you're making the playoffs or not. I think I should be clear of the buys. I'm not sure if you yeah. looked that far for yours. Um, I've looked ahead and I was good until Jamar Chase got hurt because I was yeah. Bad. All right. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, Tyreek Hill was the only one that was going to go on a bye late for me, where I didn't really have like a ton of people to put in, and now I don't have Tyreek in that week or Jamar Chase, so I have shitty running backs, and I'm going to have to put in two like mid tier wide receivers to play. Yeah, and yeah. find a flex. So we're going to get into that. My top three, real quick. Uh, I would actually put Jonah as three. Uh, the reason being, I don't trust you, Jonah. I don't think you're going to be able to make the right decisions. Bad luck. Yeah, I just don't think you'll be able to make the right decisions when they need to be made. And when people are averaging 140 against you a game, I just think that's bad juju. So um, the fa- with that being said, you scored a shit ton. He so, did trade yeah, the juju, so yeah. maybe the juju's gone. True. So I put him at three. I am going to put myself at two. The Breeze Hall thing is such a, yeah, it's a, such a head scratcher. So like... That could be a huge indicator of the, re- you yeah, the, the rest of my season. Um, I have to figure out running back. And then, uh, one, I am going to put you, Shane. Would it be literally, man, you caught everything that you said in your episode last week. But I just like your core. I like uh, yeah. when you have, like you said, CMC, Barkley, and also Stevenson. You're solid no matter who your wide receivers are. But, um I think the differentiation between those three and anyone else yeah. in it's, points it's crazy. is drastic. So because their the floor is so Exactly. High. So, so Shane, I'm going to give you one right now. Um, do you, before we get into the Jamar Chase, because that won't take too long, do you have any like dark horses or anyone to like, watch out I for? I mean, it'll probably surprise a few of you, but my dark horse actually is Logan because he's just <laughs> he's going to so many points. And no like, way. I don't know. Man. His team, like... It seems really, really good. I would have put him maybe a little higher up in the <laughs> actual rankings. But it's Logan. But, well, one, it's Logan. And two, <laughs> his team is all, like, people that 
they're not really projected to do so well, but they end up doing well. They're like, yeah. they're the boomers. They're, yep. they're not busting, they're booming every fucking week. So, I don't know, I put I put Logan up there, because so, fucking just beat me. Yeah. But watch out if I end up in the playoffs. I will say. fucking take you guys down. Yeah, well, no, that's why we need to just, like, make sure we do our yeah, part. Yeah, you guys need two more losses for me. Yeah. And I'm out of it. Because, like, I actually do, I really do like Aaron Jones. I think he was going to have a better season than what he currently is putting up. Yeah. Now, granted, when you're the only toy that Aaron Rodgers is I like, thought Dylan was going to have so much same. more of a role after last year. Kind of like a power and back. Like, run. Yeah. Like, no, Jared Jones is still I getting a, a workload. I will say, I think Logan's better, one of his better picks, and obviously Eckler is out of that. That just goes with the it territory. Is yeah. yeah. Is Evans. So Logan's yeah, had a lot of faith so in Evans. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he's had a lot of faith in Brady Evans. Brady loves him in the red zone, too. I mean. Exactly. I mean, when you're it's that tall, what is he, like 6'3", six, 6'4"? Three, six, well, I think he's got, like, the most consecutive 1,000-yard receiving And then, like, seasons. also, like, getting that suspension for Brady. Brady's going to make sure you get yours. Like, yeah. after, like, taking care of his back like that. So, um, Logan's good. Logan's team is someone to look out. I agree there. Uh, I would say my dark horse still to this day is Rob. Rob. Yeah, his team's not bad. Yeah, either. so he's, he's also just getting floating up, like, now. Yeah, yeah, so he's floating but he's, right his now. His record's fine. Though. The re- he's, yeah, he he's. Up. I think he's the same record as me. But four and three or three. Yeah, four. yeah. Which I think everyone like in the league. Yeah, is, most of the league. Yeah, is, is there's two above that. And three below. So there is in the East Division three people at four and three, and then there's Jonah at three and four, you at two and five, and Jerry at two and five, and then there's Jared um, at six and one in the West, and then we have me, Rob. Kenny at four and three, Mike at three and four, and then Adam at two and five. Yeah. So it's really anyone's game. I mean, everyone's in the mix. Those two and fives. Well, one more loss. One person is not in the mix. Jerry. Yeah, Jerry sucks. Fuck, Jerry's yeah. team fucking sucks. Yeah, fuck it. Fucking Jerry. <laughs> um, and I'm happy for it too because Jerry's a real like like opponent. Yeah. Like he. I well, think yeah. He, usually he's he's, he's always up there. No, he is. So like, I, like so again, like it's Jared another Jared thing. Like, watch that. out because you and him are the same type of freaking player. Yeah. But um, Jerry's team sucks. Sorry, Jerry. Yeah. You yeah. Fucked up I'm so. not sorry, Jerry. It's just because I've literally tried to make so many trades with him. Like, and obviously you want it to be to your benefit, but like, I think everyone is what within Jared? reason. Five hundred sixty points. Within reason. Everyone's pretty well in tune with what players' worths are. Yeah. I've given him, like, four different options for, like, one player. Like, and then I even mixed in a second player. Jared that I literally would have addressed all of his issues. After seven weeks, he's sub-700 in points for. Yeah, yeah, so... He has the least amount of points scored against him in the league, and he still can't find a win. Yeah, so... What can you say? I'm not sorry is my point, but... Um, so then, is he your worst team? Oh, yeah, by yeah. far. Yeah, I like, guess that's not even really a conversation yeah, needed. Close. Yeah, yeah, Jerry, you're His proud. 2 and 5 is way worse than me at least 2 and 5. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah, Birds. Go Birds, baby. Go Birds, baby. 6 and 0. Oh. Yeah, so. Love to see it. And we got past Dallas, who usually is the first spike for us whenever we, we have a good It's season. always a gut check. So, how do you feel? Now, granted, we're coming off the bye. Yeah. How do we feel for the rest of the season? I feel really good up until Giants. I think, like, originally when I was looking at the schedule, I was a little worried about Rodgers and Tennessee right in a row, but both of those teams were expected to be pretty good and yep. don't really look that good this year. I think with the next couple of weeks, we have Kenny Pickett to play, Davis Mills, Taylor Heineke, and yeah, Sam Ellinger. Yeah, going to that game. Our next four. Uh, Washington game. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be sick. The and we're just going to bust that up because they fucking suck too, but... Um, I don't know. Yeah. I think we look really good. Our schedule is so easy. We couldn't have gotten luckier with a schedule to have a good team at the same time. I, like I think we were top three in strength of schedule before. Now, granted, a lot of those like teams weren't supposed to be good, like in our schedule. Like Dallas wasn't supposed to be good. No, Giants. But the teams that were supposed, to be, supposed to be good are awful. Like Arizona's not really that good. Green Bay's not really that good. The Titans really aren't that yeah, good. Run of the mill teams. Colts. They thought we're going to be good. True. With that ride, That's a good. They're yeah. not good. That's a good outlook. On so that. they're all like pretty shitty yeah. for this season and I don't really understand why but they just aren't good yeah so um, strength of schedule obviously a key indicator Robert Quinn yeah why dude like, so like it's so weird man to actually have like an owner address the stuff that like the fans even want yeah it's nuts so how like during this 
I don't even know what to call it, but like spree. What have you as a fan been feeling like how Roseman's been running this team? I mean, how Roseman's killing it. Robert Quinn's a perfect example because yeah. if you look at how we got the fourth round pick, we traded Jalen Rager to the Vikings for a conditional fourth yeah. round pick. I hate him We so get much. the fourth round pick and then we trade that fourth round pick for a Pro Bowl defensive end. Yeah. And people will say that he sucks this season. I think he's gotten like I think he has one sack compared to his 28 that were last year. It doesn't matter. But he's been double teamed for the most in the entire league. I saw a stat the other day. He's been double teamed 56 times. That's disgusting. The most out of any defensive what, end. this year? Well, any defensive lineman. Just this year. Double 56? teamed 56. God damn. The next closest guy is Micah Parsons, who everybody yeah. calls as a star in 40. Now, he is a star. Oh, he is. Yeah, he is a star. And he deserves to get double teamed. Yeah. But, but he's his not, one I mean, sack was on a team that has no pass rush. And people forget. And we now have four. I mean, that's the thing. Really you match him up with Brandon Graham. Like, on the opposite and side. And Hargrave. Like, like, and Reddick. Reddick. And then you have Reddick. And then you have to do I love our line. Like, right. I love our It defense. really reminds me of, like, mid-season when we picked up Chris Long in our Super Bowl run. Oh, my and we God. Just, we just got, like, I this stud from I love Chris Long. He loves Philly. Too. Yeah, he still loves Philly. He talks about it all the time. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it just it's making me really reminisce so then what about do you our think? Super Bowl year, but we're a better team this year than we were in our Super Bowl year. So, wild that you said that because when I'm watching with the Phillies right now, mm-hmm. it's reminding me so much of that of the 08 team. Then. So, like, well, I mean, Romuto's Inside the Parker was an exact replica of Utley's Inside the Parker yeah, in the same year. So, crazy because I, I was actually involved in I saw like the guy I was with, uh, he was like, yeah, so we're down, but it's only going to set up Bryce Harper for a uh, career type of highlight where he's going to watch him. I called it in the bar. And it literally, he did that. Like, he said that like whenever the um, whenever they scored the Dodgers, or sorry, the Padres. Yeah. And that was, yeah. So anyway, I get that feeling, like that of the 08. So basing it off of what you just said, you're getting the Super Bowl feels. I think it's even better than that. Because during that Super Bowl year that we did win, there was so much controversy with our quarterback situation. Yeah. And whereas like now it's like, no, Jalen and Hurts, I that's genuinely our guy. think, I mean, 2017 was a great run, but realistically we made a crazy push in the playoffs that we shouldn't really Why? have been. Like, because when you have your main quarterback. We deserve to be in the playoffs yeah, this time, yeah. and I think we can still do it. So, so what do you think we end teams. at in the regular season? I think we're going to get a loss. It's so tough to go undefeated in the NFL. I don't I think, think we go undefeated. Yeah. Day. Yeah. Um, I see us splitting the Giants. We don't end up okay. playing them until late. All right. Um, I still think we win one seed in the NFC. We definitely win the East. Yeah, but I see us losing sure. one to the Giants, and I could see us losing one game. We may lose the second Dallas game, possible, just because of the rivalry. Yeah, yeah. And I see us losing one against either Green Bay or the Titans, despite them being shit. The players are just so good, and, I mean, like I said, you can't win them all. So. Yeah. I see us losing two to three games, maybe, but ideally, you know, I think we have a chance to win none, but it's so hard. To so win you, so because we play what seventeen games now? Yeah. So you're thinking? No, it's still. I think it's no, sixteen it's games, eight, seventeen weeks. I think it's eighteen week, Is it? weeks. I don't know, it's something like that. I know they changed it and added one. Because recently. that's why I was messaging you guys in the seat. I'm like, hey, like, it's kind of fucked, like mm-hmm. the way that the playoffs work for us with the regular season. But uh, so like fourteen and three, thirteen and three, whatever it might be. That's your. Yeah, I'm thinking like twelve and four. 13 and 4, like whatever, yeah, like whatever that I mean, is. Yeah, four losses. I think, I think over 12 wins, yeah, a thousand percent. I think four losses is like enough where it's like, hey, like, we're not on If we have to like sit somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. It depends so. on how uh, the Giants and Dallas do because they suck. I mean, they're technically still on their heels. I think we're much no, better. No, not teams technically, than them, they are. No, record yeah, they wise, are, yeah. they're right there. Without a doubt. So and we like, do have to keep winning. Especially when it comes to division games, too. Like, and they have we're just as right. easy games as us. Exactly. They have the same schedule. So it depends on like, like the inner division record 100% matters. Overall, obviously, weighs all. But yeah. like, but we play the same exactly. teams because we're So like teams. any one loss, like let's say we play Dallas, Giants, Washington. And let's say we're going up against Dallas. Like Let's say it's us at the end of the season. And let's say Dallas beats up on Giants in Washington, but so do we. Yeah. But then we lose to Dallas. Dallas. So we lose then we lose one, but they win one, and then they win one back on us. So yeah. it's, and I agree, man. I 100% uh, am with you there. And then, um, yeah, I would, yeah, like I said, like 13 and four areas I'm feeling too. If I had to just based off of how our normal seasons go, 
I'd be way more than happy with like ten and six. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But so this year, I, would I know it's six. just like we also do. Ten and six know, is getting out this year. Yeah, I think it's seventeen. I don't know why. I think it's seventeen. Yep. So I think twelve and five gets us secure. Mm -hmm. But playoffs, like because I'm cool with doing what the Phillies are doing. Yeah. Getting into the playoffs and then we're running with it. Yeah, so we play better as underdogs. Uh, yeah, love it. Uh, yeah, so it's the it. underdog city. Uh, talking about underdogs, you got any uh, any bets? Any underdog yeah, bets? Or anything like that? Bets. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's hear them. Little sheet out here. So uh, just like uh, give us like the fun one first, a one you can see possibly hitting, and then give me your lock. Yeah, you so I did come up with three. So I got an Eagles parlay. That's perfect. Which, I mean, we all love birds. So um, I'm taking. Alternate spread minus seven and a half. I think ten and a half points is just is a lot to give. Ten and, ten and, and a half is the what spread. Is okay. So I took seven and a half just in case we have some kind of a fluke. Um, mm -hmm. I think ten and a half we can definitely do, but seven and a half is safer for it's the It's a bet. lot of points. Um, I have a Hertz study. I have Devonte Smith getting a touchdown, and Miles Sanders over sixty-four and a half rushing. I don't want to give him the touchdown because he always gets yanked from him, but I think he's going to have a good running game. Um, I think the Steelers are really going to be trying to get our D backs because their quarterbacks suck. I think they're going to leave the box wide open. So I don't see Sanders going under that. Um, that's plus 1060 on FanDuel. So oh, yeah. okay. a little bit. Um, then I have and, a and that's like there. the fun one. You just kind of. Yeah, that's, yeah I guess that's so with everything, birds and everything. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think that they, I, to be honest, I don't think it's a bad bet, but Devontae Smith versus A.J. Brown, Goddard, I mean, you have yeah. who knows the comps. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I have a league parlay, which a couple of games. Um, Jacksonville minus two and a half. Okay. Jacksonville's definitely going to beat Denver. I don't think there's any way that they don't. Um, they actually look pretty good this year. So um, then I have Miami minus three and a half. They're playing Detroit. Um, I think Tua bounces back after the injury. Last week was a little shaky. I think him and Tyreek Hill really find their connection again, which would be good for my fantasy team too. Yeah, um, and then I have Jets money line versus New England because they're getting points, and I think they're way better than New England is. So New England. <sighs> so that's it. That's plus six ninety eight. Okay. Three team parlay, six ninety eight. That one's tough. I think the New England one because I don't got a Jets feel are. for them. Okay, like, I just don't. And like the Jets do normally put up a good. They just got James Robinson and they have Michael Carter, who's okay. I'm not like no, a huge Michael, Michael Carter. No, so I actually am, yeah, man. So like, I don't think he's that good. Shane and I were talking about this before the season, and he was like, "Hey, man, like I don't know, like Brees Hall is like a good pick, but there's Michael Carter, and like I didn't think anything of and it. And they weren't using him with so, Brees Hall. So don't get me wrong. Brees Hall after this season developed it. He's that guy. Yeah, he's, like, he's guy. their running back. But if you watch Michael, seriously, and like, if you want to watch it a yeah. little bit more, Michael Carter, like he's, he does not remind me of Shady McCoy. No. But the way that he cuts, I and just, like, the way that he's able to make people, I mean, we'll probably see this impressive. weekend because James yeah. Robinson. There's no way he's gonna have a workhorse load. Nah, it's gonna be after split. Just being I traded. think it's gonna be split. And I think it's gonna be mostly Michael Carter this week, but. I think James Robinson ultimately takes that role. He's a way better running back in my yeah. eyes. And him and Etienne in Jacksonville, they were both studs when they were running, but Etienne is the, the rookie, well, younger. I think he's yeah. in his second year now. Um, so that's why I think that's why they traded Robinson, because they could get a little high stock for him. He's a good running back. And they just see him moving forward And he can catch ETN. balls. And gotcha. Yeah, move forward. Okay. Like and, and that then, was, what was that at? That was a plus 698, okay. just across the league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Really do. And my lock it up is Jets money line with a Ramondre Stevenson touchdown. Wow. So right, what's that? I, I'm locking it in. The Jets are going to win. I'm not, I don't need the points. It's better if I just So straight up, huh? Straight up, they're going to be Stevenson tutty. And the tutty. And that's a plus 401. Two legs are 401. Off so. So now you... I, I actually love how you kind of split that up a little bit because you have your lock, which is still plus money mm -hmm. at plus four. You have your, you think you can hit it, and that's at plus six, and then you have your plus a thousand. So you kind of went up in like, yeah. like tranches, I guess you would say. Like, well, I mean, you kind of make it like, this is my yeah, long shot, this so, is what I actually believe in, and this is what I So can't then, lose. my point being, me and Adam got into it in our episode, like how much, like units. Yeah. So, for the wild one, the plus a thousand. For the how birds, many I would throw like half to a unit. Okay. Um, so because it's it's plus a thousand, so you're gonna get yeah. ten x on your money. Um, my league parlay, the second one, plus six ninety eight. I would throw like a unit and a half. Okay. And then my lock it up, I would bet the house. So like, how? What's in the two account? to five? Yeah, whatever's in the yeah, yeah. pretty much. Got two it. to five. Okay. Got it. And um, 
what would you say is the main indicator of your luck? Why are you so confident in the Jets? Play? I think the Jets look really good and the Patriots look really bad. Even during the controversy and everything, like with like Brees Hall yeah, I mean, going down, it is really running back in the They still looked program. good when Brees Hall came out of the game. True. They really did. And I mean, I would never bet on the Jets. If you would have asked me last year, if that's I what I, Jets, I, I'm, I'm just saying. Like, yeah, it feels like all that one of my friends is betting on the Jets. But the Jets look good this year. And granted, I bet and on the Patriots. The running back don't game. conversely. So like, who do you think? The, who do you think the Patriots go with next week? I think the uh, the young kid now Mac Jones. Zabby. Zabby. Yeah. yeah. Huh. I think they go with Zappy. He as soon as they took out Mac Jones, he fucking threw a touchdown. He kind of looks like he has more of a, like a little bit of a fuck you attitude. And the attitude. city likes him. Yeah. The Patriots now, granted, like New England likes him. They like they, Mac Jones too, like, but he's not. Yeah, but like, let's call it what it is. Like people are, oh, they are so similar. Like, no, they're not. They're, not they're just they're a clean cut white guy with blonde hair. That's what you're seeing. Like they obviously like have draw that similarity. Yeah. But like from a play standpoint, there's no way. I don't think Mac they're... Jones is more so thinking think of like doing check downs. Mac Jones is going to get traded. Is going, he's going to be a high. Stock I think Zappy is like a Brett Favre type of guy who is a like willing. I'm not saying like the inaccuracy or the accuracy or the caliber or non caliber is there, but like that mindset. Where he's like, hey, fuck it. I think that guy's gonna be open. I'm gonna let my Go guy make a play. Yeah. That type of deal. Whereas Mac Jones is so technically Which, based. Once people get some film on him, I mean, he could do the same thing Carson Wentz did, where like he looked it flames incredible. Out. Yeah, and, it flames out. You know, everybody figures out what he's gonna do. The and technical guy, him. which is Mac Jones, that plays longer. Yeah. That plays for longer. Mac um, Jones reminds me a lot of Garoppolo. I just don't know if Mac Jones has that, like, it. Like, he doesn't man. seem like a winner. He seems like two teddy bears. And that's one of the things that I said about Jalen Hurts when he was originally coming into the league and he had like a shaky season. He just knows how to win. Yeah. He's yeah, a winner. I agree. Heart. And I, that's why I think it was great that we stuck with him and he's finally like coming out of his shell and he's really figuring out like what works for him yeah. in the NFL. Um, I don't think Mac Jones is a winner. I think he's like a fundamental guy that can get it done, but he's never going to be... Yeah, because yeah. It, like, I guess you can even make that argument back for even when he was in college. You put him into an Alabama Alabama program, any capable quarterback is going to do well. Easy. You can well, take easy. him out, put him in, and then like again, like I don't know how it went down. I think everybody got like, really hyped up about Jay Mac Jones. You have Mac Jones. You have yeah. Tua. Like it was like the system, but then you take Tua and Jalen. They're a completely different caliber of player. Absolutely. Completely different. I think everybody got really high on Mac Jones because it was after Brady and everybody was expecting New England to suck. The new white hope. Let's call it what it is. They were expecting New England to suck and it didn't suck for a year because their offensive line was so good, their defense was so good. But now their defense has fallen apart. Yeah, people forgot you had to pay those and, guys though. Yeah, that's what I mean. I think <laughs> they're losing out on the guys yeah. that were making them good and Brady was a step above. So when they were a little bad, he yeah. can pick up the slack. I don't think Mac Jones picks up the slack. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So the Jets locked it in. All right. I have two. I don't have anything like fun like that. Uh, I'm my first one is like my quote unquote fun one. It's a homer bet. Cooper Cup two tutties. Love him coming off of a bye. Get got some time to like uh, I think he had an ankle or something where it was sore. Uh, I think Matt Stafford gets right a little bit after a break. Yeah. Um, he had a good game coming I off. I think he's going to throw it into the bye. He yeah. did, which is always good, like going into a bye. Yeah. Even um, Allen Robinson. I think he's loss. going to spread the ball more yeah. moving forward. But I think because of that, Cooper Cup gets open a lot more often. Yeah. So I'm doing two tutties. That's at plus 750. Mm-hmm. I would probably throw. Just the two tutties at 750? Just two tutties oh, at plus. Good. Exactly. The money's there. I would put, honestly, even though that's like a fetch. Like one unit on it, mm-hmm. I just like those odds. Yeah. Like when I think Cooper Cup's like single touchdowns are favored. Like I think he's like minus one forty. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 minus one forty or something. So like, if you're giving me that separation of two between minus one forty and plus seven fifty, I'm gonna take that. The value's there. Like yeah, so like I'm gonna do that, and then the other one is just kind of a straight bet, covering the spread. Completely random team. I don't really. I I was talking to you right before. I don't really like the matchups too much. Um, I'm picking the Vikings minus three and a half versus Arizona. I'm not sold on Arizona. I don't like them. I've been like that, I love that. from the beginning. I'm telling you, I like Kirk Cousins with Arizona Justin Jefferson. Minus what time half. do they play? I, it, I'm pretty sure it's a one o'clock game. Yeah, better. So it, I, that Prime that Prime was Prime. what it was. Yeah, one o'clock. So like that was an indicating like factor. I was like, all right, it's a one o'clock game. game. It's not a prime time. Yeah, exactly. it's not prime time. No, I wouldn't even smell that if it was prime time. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, so I'll take that. It's at minus 110. I actually like the Vikings a lot, man. Uh, I fucking hate them, but I love them in the sense of this pick. And I think they'll cover... I think Arizona, I think, truthfully, are going to get exposed a little bit. I'm going to go on record saying that I hope you win because I want you to win money. Anything before the word but is bullshit. But I don't like that bet. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let's do a gentleman's bet. If it wins, you owe me a bottle, whiskey, bourbon, whatever you want, and vice versa. Sure. Thanks for that, man. All right, so I, so I do... On camera too. Yeah, I, can't I was going to say, you can't take that back now, bro. I'm sure cut the scene. Yeah, we still got to edit it. We'll just put the thing that tastes so I'm going to cut it out myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, man. And then lastly, I guess just we'll, we'll round this out. Um, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I want you to look at the Lee right now on your phone. And as it stands today, I want you to pick the top eight. Top eight? Like who's, I making, wonder the who's making the playoffs? <laughs> Nothing off of rankings, just. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Mike is shit out of luck. I think Jerry is definitely shit out of luck. Um, so I'd say making the playoffs. Because it's interesting because you're kind of in that mix a little I bit. <laughs> I'm saying Shane, Logan, Mick, me, Jared, Hunter, Rob. Um, Burke, let's just go over real quick. It stopped at your top eight teams who you think are all making the playoffs. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much going to be the ending point of this, but I do, I know you had a few things to say. Um, so I'm going to end my, my part of this podcast by saying, again, Burke, I am happy you're having a very bad year. And uh, I hope to meet you this year. What else do you got? Um, so you want me to go over the teams again, or you want me to say? Uh, no, I think we got that, right? We got Yeah, just, just go over it again. Yeah, go over um, it again. Basically, I just think that Lily's not making it, Jerry's not making it. Um, Jonah's not making it because of extreme bad luck. Yeah, right. And forgetting my fourth was. Uh, There's Jerry, Jonah, Adam. Oh, yeah, Lily. And, yeah, but I don't remember the fourth was except Lily. I'm like right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should be right around here, too. You're right there. Oh, wow. Cool. Um, Great card golf. Basically, I just want to say, fuck you, Logan, again. <laughs> um, look out if I get in the playoffs because you guys are in fucking trouble. Um, and, I mean, that's really about it. Fuck all of you guys for putting up so many points against me. My stomach hurts every week after I lose. But I sleep well knowing that I took all of your money for the last two years. So. Yeah, that's always. And uh, prediction for tonight's game against the, uh, for the Phillies. Phillies winning. Wheeler's dealing. What's the score? Uh, I think we're going low score today. 4-3. Kind of like I predicted yesterday. 4-3. 4 3-4. Something like that. Yeah, I think the bats are going to come alive a little bit. I think 6-2. Uh, 6-2 two. Six, two Phillies. I think Harper wakes up. Yeah, he's, he's going to snap a little. A so uh, that's the podcast, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Later.